Welcome to History at Home, bringing the museum to you. Today I want to share with you a letter written by a local soldier who served in World War I, Louis Guilu. The letter was written on February 21st, 1917 from somewhere in France and was written to his priest, Father O'Neill. Here are a few excerpts. Dear Father O'Neill, just a few lines to let you know I'm still in the land of the living and I'm fine under the hardships we have to go through. But I came out here expecting those things. I knew there was no armchair out here for me to sit in. We have water up to our knees in the trenches and mud from our feet to our eyes. But such is life in the army. It's not just as good as undertaking, but I hope we will soon win and come back home. Well, Father, what do you think of the war? Do you think it will be soon over? I think it will. It can't last much longer. Hunger is started in Germany, so the papers say. Please give Mr. Morse my best regards whenever you see him. He closes with the request that Father O'Neill write him back. A letter to a loved one is such a personal thing, and I always find that after reading, I want to know more about these men, who they were before the battlefield. A soldier's attestation papers are a wealth of biographical knowledge and can usually be found in the online searchable database of Library and Archives Canada. From this document, I learned that Louis Guilu was born on Jersey in the Channel Islands of Great Britain on June 8, 1895. He had blue eyes, black hair, lived in Niagara Falls, and worked as an undertaker. If you're a Niagara Falls local, the mention of Mr. Morse may have been a clue to you, connecting Guilu with the Morse & Sons Funeral Home, which opened in 1826 by Austin Morse. The funeral home still exists to this day, now owned by the Morgan family. The profession of undertaker prompted me to search another archival document in the museum's collection, the diaries of Drummond Hill Cemetery's caretaker from 1876 to 1916, William Dalton. Dalton recorded interesting pieces of information about those he buried, including the presiding funeral home staff. Sure enough, Guilu was referenced numerous times beginning in 1913, often leading the horse-drawn hearse to the cemetery. On November 18, 1914, Dalton describes an instance where a new team of horses got away from Guilu and ended up breaking the leg of assistant undertaker Blake Hetherington. Guilu was shaken up, but then got the opportunity to serve as assistant undertaker while Hetherington healed over the following months. On December 30th, 1915, Dalton writes that Guilu joined the soldiers, leaves on the 3rd of January, 1916, got to get a new man to break in. To continue the search, I turned to local newspaper articles for further mention of Guilu. On April 25th, 1917, the Niagara Falls Gazette wrote a short article sharing the news that Guilu died on April 9th at the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Guilu died alongside roughly 3,600 other Canadians in a battle that saw all four divisions of the Canadian Corps advancing towards a victory that would later be hailed as a nation-defining moment in Canadian history. So often I think it's too easy to get lost in the sheer number of soldiers who have fought and died for our country. For me, piecing together the life of Louis Guilu and sharing his story is one small way I can put a face to the staggering numbers. Remember Louis Guilu the soldier, the undertaker, the Niagara Falls local with blue eyes. Thanks for letting us bring the museum to you.